This film will help you detect failure symptoms in plain bearings, and like a doctor, prescribe a cure on the basis of your diagnosis. These are plain bearings, all sharing certain common characteristics. They all maintain sliding contact between surfaces, generally are not too sensitive to contamination, withstand shock loads, and support tremendous radial or thrust loads. This is a tilting pad thrust bearing. The pad is supported on a crowned button, a design which permits the tilting operation of this bearing. A plain bearing frequently encountered is this precision insert split sleeve type with Babbitt faces bonded to steel. A bearing designed to support a radial load. A variation is this self-aligning precision bearing, which adapts to changes in shaft alignment. It's designed to prevent excessive edge loading. This particular bearing is an actual fleet failure and has a number of surface signs that are typical of damage occurring in plane bearings. We'll use it as an example throughout much of the film, as a case study of plane bearing damage. What made this bearing fail? A defect in manufacture? Normal fatigue? Or is something wrong with the shaft that rotates inside the bearing? Maybe faulty lubrication or misalignment? It's vitally important to find out exactly what caused the damage and correct it so it won't happen again. By making careful measurements and taking detailed notes, by being part detective and part doctor, you'll be able to detect the cause of trouble and come up with a cure. Work in a well-lighted area, clean and free from contamination. Use the same care as a detective in a crime lab. Have all the technical and historical information on the bearings at hand. Tech manuals, which contain drawings of the bearing, the machinery history card, and proper tools. Carefully record the identification numbers, checking that replacements are available. Take measurements at points marked on the bearing by the manufacturer to determine any change from original thickness. Before taking bore measurements, secure the half shells together by any means that will not distort the shells. In this case, wiring. A Joe Block stack or master ring gauge is used to set the specified bore dimension. The comparator shows the difference between the standard and the actual bearing bore. Out of round and taper are seen as changes in the readings. Comparators provide the most accurate method for obtaining these measurements. Carefully inspect each piece for signs of damage. Sketch the damage you find and keep those sketches. Make complete, accurate records of all your visual inspections. In the future, they'll prove invaluable for evaluating changes in the condition of the bearing. Progressive changes often give valuable information that can't be gained from a one-time inspection of the bearing. Now that we've seen how to record what we find, we'll look closely at a variety of failure modes commonly occurring on plane bearings. Our case study, self-aligning precision bearing, will help us again. This is minor scratching caused by very fine foreign particles, only a few thousandths of an inch in diameter, circulating freely in the lube oil, grinding and scratching the surface. Here on a different bearing is another example of scratching. Deeper and therefore more serious than the first. And here is an extreme case. Examine the filter or strainer basket frequently, since scratching indicates particles in the lube oil.
check for holes which allow large particles to circulate with the oil. Repair the mesh or replace it. You may find a variety of particles. Important clues to developing problems or to damage already sustained. Babbitt particles could be coming from other bearings serviced by the same lube oil system. Check out the other bearings. Rust particles are caused by the corrosion of iron. Flush the lube oil system and check all gaskets and O-ring seals in the cooling system. Brass or bronze particles usually come from accessory gears. Check the teeth for burrs and other projections. Round beads or shot come from welding. Check lube oil flanges, pipes, and the sump for good condition around welds. Then flush the system. Paint chips are frequently knocked off machine parts during assembly or disassembly and show a lack of cleanliness during reassembly. Fibers are also found where careless cleaning has occurred. Sometimes particles are found embedded in the bearing surface itself. These brass particles came from an accessory gear. Such shallowly embedded particles create a raised surface that may cause hot spots that can impede lubrication and lead to bearing seizure. Depending on the degree of damage, you may be able to restore the bearing surface by scraping a procedure which must be carried out only with expert skill and highly qualified supervision, and only with correct tools. Remember, all bearing surfaces normally show some degree of scratching, but you must determine whether the scratching necessitates repair or replacement, or as in our case study bearing, is minor and normal. Misalignment is another damage mode caused by improper installation, faulty coupling with another shaft, or by thermal changes in the machine itself. Sometimes the pattern of wear on the bearing surface will lead you to the source of trouble. The wear will probably have a diagonal pattern, like this, if the bearing is misaligned with the shaft. Here, on another bearing face, we see evidence that the axis was even more angled. For comparison, here's a bearing with a normal wear pattern. Note the more or less rectangular band of visible wear across the face. Check out all possible causes of misalignment, especially shaft couplings. Check for improper bolt torques broken tangs and foreign matter in the bearing housing seat. Another type of damage seen on this bearing is corrosion. Corrosion is caused by excess fresh or salt water in the lube oil. It most often shows up as an attack on the steel surfaces, producing rust particles which circulate in the lube system. Again, a reminder, keep complete records of all your work all your findings. Salt water in the oil, or a high temperature breakdown of the oil into organic acids, will produce corrosion like this. Corrosion indicates that an oil purification operation may be necessary, that tubes may require plugging to stop heat exchanger leaks of salt water. Here, on our case study bearing, we see an indication of an extremely rare failure mode in turbine bearings, fatigue, in this case caused by heavy vibration in the ship and subsequent repeated impacts of the shaft on the bearing face. When fatigue occurs in turbine bearings, the bearing must always be replaced. In diesel bearings, however, fatigue is the most common mode of failure and replacement is not necessary until more than 10% of the surface has been removed. Now, we'll use this bearing to illustrate the machining failure mode we don't find on our case study bearing. Fine slivers of metal are characteristic of this failure. The dark scab composed of fibers welded together by frictional heating is often seen in damage as severe as this. 
very extensive repairs to journals or thrust runners are required after a machining failure. A slight darkening of the oil is usually the earliest sign of this failure mode. A rapid increase of small slivers, sometimes called steel wooling, on the magnets of the lube oil strainer is a definite sign of machining. There is no cure but replacement and the most thorough cleansing of the lubricating system. And you must notify NAVSEC and NAV ships. We'll use our case study bearing to show wiping, the displacement of bearing surface material. Wiping results from high loads and temperatures that melt the bearing surface material, causing it to flow. A light wipe characteristically shows extraordinary polish and glaze. In a heavier wipe, because the shaft was allowed to turn after the original damage, the wipe surface may show marks of rotation. If the wipe is not caught quickly, most of the babbit will melt and run into lubrication passages, often stopping oil flow. The exact reason for wiping may be hard to pinpoint, since it can be caused by faulty lubrication, insufficient clearance between bearing and shaft, misalignment, or uneven journal surfaces. Your records may hold a clue. This is a section turbo generator. We'll use it to illustrate troubleshooting procedures. Wipes are always accompanied by excessive heat, by far the most common symptom of bearing failure. Check out the oil cooling system to make sure it's working properly. Remember that oil serves not only as a lubricant, but also functions as a coolant, carrying away the heat of friction from between sliding surfaces. Watch for a rapid rise in lube temperature, or a rise above the usual operating temperature of the bearing, detecting the heat by feel and by reading the outlet lube oil temperature. But the most effective method is use of the resistance temperature element, or RTE, monitor. The RTE monitor gives the most responsive measurement of bearing metal temperature and will indicate trends in bearing temperatures. When the RTE monitor shows the expected readings, operation is normal. When the monitor shows a higher than expected temperature, a careful watch should be maintained. Unexpected and unexplained increases in temperature may warn of a serious problem. If the trend continues and no external reasons for the temperature increase can be found, it may be necessary to secure the machine. If the monitor shows a red light, the temperature is at least 25 degrees over the maximum. When disassembly is required, be very careful not to distort the bearing shell. A simple bearing jack will roll out the shell without the use of hammers. When bearing replacement is required, you've got to be careful not to waste all of this fine investigative work when you install a new or repaired bearing. Remember always to keep a complete record of your work, checking carefully to make sure you have the proper replacement bearing. A wrong part means instant damage. Examine the new bearing for defects. Any new bearing fresh from the box can have defects and in that case should not be used. Thoroughly clean the backs of bearings and their housing to eliminate particles that might cause hot spots and uneven wear. The taking of leads during reassembly can provide clearance and alignment measurements often obtainable in no other way, as demonstrated on our sectioned turbo generator. Insert lead wires between the bearing and journal surfaces. Install the bearing carefully checking alignment. Make sure the bearing is properly seated. Then torque housing bolts down to the specified limits. Then disassemble the bearing and carefully remove the leads. Take and record micrometer measurements of the leads. 
A uniform thickness of lead along the bearing length indicates correct alignment, and the absolute value of the lead thickness indicates the clearance. You've accurately read the symptoms and determined the causes of bearing failure. Now your prescribed remedy, in this case replacement, must be carried out with the same careful attention that enabled you to discover the original damage. Follow approved procedures. Do it right. Take your time. Keep complete, accurate records. And the new bearing will give you many thousands of hours of trouble-free service.